Generally speaking, when you're out in nature, there are two ways to enjoy a mountain or a huge rock, and that's from the base or from the top. Unless you're a group of hardy climbers who enjoy everything in between. In our first story, Ed Jones meets up with the Southern Climbers Coalition, a group who not only enjoy the challenge of climbing, they've turned their passion into a means of preservation. We're so fortunate in the southeast, particularly in eastern Tennessee, there are so many good areas to, to climb. In fact, there's more climbable rock within 25 miles of Chattanooga than, than Boulder, Colorado. For the members of the Southeast Climbers Coalition, climbing's not just a sport, it's a passion. A passion that finds fulfillment through the thrill of scaling Tennessee's rocky crags while preserving these natural wonders for all to enjoy. Efforts to ensure access to Sunset Rock in Chattanooga led to the formation of the SCC in 1993. Brad McLeod is treasurer for the coalition. It was an area that was being threatened with, with closure. Uh, from a lot of different issues and so climbers kind of rallied around that and at first we were going to be called uh, the friends of sunset rock but later as we started to talk we were like what about other crags and all of a sudden we started thinking is like this could be way bigger than you know our initial you know, idea with sunset rock and as scc representative chad weichel explains that initial idea pretty much sums up the organization's mission. It's really simple, to gain and maintain access uh, for future climbing generations. And you know, that involves lots of things, uh, from being environmental stewards to building relationships with landowners and just enjoying outdoor recreation. Yeah, that thing gets yeah, good when you lots of things it. involved. Yeah, it's <laughs> The first step involved in gaining access is meeting and greeting. We just try to go out and talk to the landowners and we try to just create a relationship and we basically just ask for permission. A lot of times we give things in kind to them, whether it's a cleanup of their land. And then from there, the next step would be to ask to uh, lease the land. If we still can't make any movement with that, then the last resort is to actually purchase the land. You know, before we didn't really think that concept would work out because so we didn't know if climbers either had the money or would give the money, but we found out that it's actually the opposite is true, is that climbers really want to donate money to help preserve land and keep it forever. <laughs> this is Stone Fort. Definitely one of the best climbing areas that we have on the East Coast. This property is actually on a golf course and owned by Henry Lucan. I can't imagine a more gracious landowner. Not only was he interested in letting us use this property for the, for the climbing competition, but he was interested in us creating year-round access to the boulder field. And the SEC definitely owns property, and that's definitely part of our, our mission is to own pieces of land so we can secure access forever. But a lot of the climbing is on private property and federal property and the only way to maintain good relationships is just being good stewards of the land uh, and anytime that we're on it acting as if it were our own and taking care of it. I think historically climbers have been seen by the public as good stewards of the land and we hope that that's always the case. A lot is done behind the scenes with young climbers to develop that as, as part of their personality. One thing that we have to do, all people have to do, is nice do their best to maintain a resource. Going out and, and destroying it or using it for whatever personal gain that you might want, that's, that's a real shame in my mind, and I would never want to be a part of something like, like that. Responsible land use is close to my heart, and helping others to, to see and understand that is important to me too. 
I'm a fan of all climbing areas. I don't know any climbing area that I don't like. I mean, I've, I've traveled across the U.S. I've climbed overseas in Thailand and, and France, but you know, the South is dear uh, to my heart. And um, I'm just kind of a, a junkie for these backwoods, crags. There's Tennessee's just really blessed with uh, miles and miles of just beautiful sandstone. Some of the greatest moments in my life in climbing, as corny as it may sound, has been sitting up on top of a boulder in a boulder field that used to be closed, is now has now been opened by climbers, and just sitting there and listening to the people walking by, they're hiking, the kids are playing, people are laughing. I mean, those are memories that I'll have forever, and I think that's something that kind of keeps you supercharged, keeps you energized to go back out there again. I mean, yeah, there's a selfish side of it where I want to be able to go and climb on a boulder like that, but whenever you're doing something for other people and other people get enjoyment out of it, I think it just magnifies that experience and it's something that keeps you going in preservation. In the areas that the SEC has, they're in land trust. Our kids and their kids, they'll have that land and it's theirs to enjoy. Good job.